Bibles, turn with us to the book of First Samuel, chapter number seventeen. First Samuel, chapter number seventeen. I've been preaching here for several weeks, and you may be wondering when am I going to quit preaching on David? Well, when I get through, and when the Lord says it's enough, and I've been preaching right on the same line of, of thought. It's what God laid on my heart. I thought last night while I was studying, I thought, well, Lord, maybe it's time to move on. And God said, Where to? God says, we're too. I say, Lord, that's just wherever you want. So I'm going to stay right here for at least another message. And uh, again, if you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of 1 Samuel. And I'm going to read just a few verses here, beginning with verse number, uh, verse number 43. 1 Samuel chapter number 17 and verse number 43. Stand with us, if you will, while we read. <clears throat> 1 Samuel 17 and verse number 43. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his God. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh into the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Father, we thank you for the word of God today. 
I pray, God, you bless it. Lord, I pray that you'd help us. Lord, as we stand behind this pulpit, God, to rightly divide the word of truth. Lord, forgive me my sins, my failures. Let me be clean, God, today. Lord, I pray the power of God would help us. Lord, I'm nothing except that you do the preaching today. God, I can't do anything. But I pray right now, God, you give us strength. God, I pray that you give us wisdom. Lord, give us the words we need to say. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We come to this place in David's life. We've been preaching on it for a while. Where David has came from the, he has came from the uh, battle with the, the lion and the bear. And now he has come to a place where he's in a battle for the liberty and for the freedom of the nation of Israel. The armies had been, had been uh, together and been hollering at one another and, and uh, been, you know, uh, old blabbermouth and big mouth. Uh, Goliath, he had, you know, he was just standing out there telling David and talking a big story and tell David all that he was going to do to him and how he was going to do it. And, and he had only himself to lean on and to, uh, you know, try to get some strength from was his own self. But David came to him and he told him, he said, I'm coming in the name of the Lord. He said, you come to me with sword and spear but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Now David had something to back up his word. And he had confidence in the one that would back him up when it come time to slew, to slay this giant. And friend, I think about it today. There's many people facing many giants in their lives. But there's one bigger than your giant, amen? There's one bigger than your problem. There's one bigger than your storm. There's one bigger that will take care of you and those out there just talking a good talk. Amen. I want to preach to you for a little while this morning on our responsibility to stand against the enemy. Our responsibility to stand. Now over the last weeks we've told you about this all going on in the world, how wicked the world has become, but you're facing that enemy every day of your life. You face that enemy and it's called the enemy of the, of the world the flesh, and the devil. And you say, preacher, I'm not having any problem with this. You know why? Because you're right where the devil wants you. If you're not in a battle, friend, then you're on the sidelines. If you're not trying to stand for what's right, then you're on the sidelines. And that's what the army of Israel was. They were living in a life or death situation. They were living on the precipice of either liberty or slavery. They had come within just a few miles of the homeland of, of Israel. They'd come to near Jerusalem, and they were ready just to take over. And if Israel lost this battle, we said last week, they would, would have been slaves to the Philistines. But David saw all of this, and he saw that there's somebody got to stand up for what's right. Somebody has got to take some responsibility here. Now remember, David was the youngest one of the bunch. All his brothers that he went on to the battle, they wasn't standing up. Saul, who, uh, why should Saul have been in the battle? Because he was head and shoulders above everybody else. He should have been the one trusting the Lord to defeat Goliath. But it wasn't his lot. It was David's lot to do this. So uh, the responsibility of us to stand against the enemy is known today. David had a responsibility. He had came down there bringing provisions for his brethren. But God knew all along why he was sending him down there. He was sending him down there to face the giant. He had a responsibility because his family was in the battle. Now you, you may say, preacher, I'm facing a battle, but my family is facing a battle. Amen? There's not a person in here that's either not either in a battle, coming out of a battle, or going into a battle. And you say, well, preacher, what do we do? You stand. Amen? You always stand on the side of what's right. You stand for the things of the Lord. You stand for what's true. You stand for what the Bible stands for. And friend, in these last days, you'll be all right. In these last days that we're living in, you trust in God. Now David, when he went into that battle, he was all alone. His brothers ridiculed him. 
Oh, and, and Saul tried to put his armor on him. That wasn't good. That wasn't going to help him. There was nothing that David could do except rely on the power and the strength of God Almighty. But he did, and he knew how. And his responsibility was not only to the nation of Israel, but his responsibility was that his family was there, and if, if somebody didn't stand up to Goliath, the chances were good that his family might, you know, his brothers might be overrun by the Philistines and all of them be killed. But David had a reason. He had responsibility that he would stand. If you're battling the enemy today, I want to tell you and I want to encourage you, amen, just keep battling. Just keep fighting. I heard a fellow say one time, and, and uh, you know, I was talking to him. I said, I said, preacher, he's my pastor at the time. Pastor B.B. Boyle, amen. He was my pastor at the time, and I was discussing with him some things going on in life, and I said, I'm getting tired. I said, what do you do when you get tired? And the best advice that he could give anybody was just keep fighting, amen. No matter how fire, how tired you may be in the battle, just keep fighting for what's right. Just keep standing for the Lord. Just, you know, sometimes, sometimes if preachers feel like they're preaching to the, to the wind, you know, sometimes I've been in the place where I, you know, I'm just, I, I'm quitting this. You say, a preacher gets that way? Yeah. You get discouraged like everybody else. Pastor gets discouraged like everybody else. And sometimes I, I've thought in a few times, well, I'll just, I'll just slack off. I'll just quit, you know, I'll just slack off and just go along with with the flow, and that thought lasted about three seconds, and the Holy Spirit of God would convict me, and I would think, no, there's no time to slack off. There's no time to back down. If ever ever been a time for the preaching of the Word of God and for the preaching of the truth of the Bible, it is the day that we live in. See, we've come so far away from the preaching of the truth that most churches you go into, you preach them the truth, and they wouldn't understand because they've never heard it. Amen. I've been in places, like I've said before, I've been in places where it's as cold as last year and dry as last year's bird's nest, and you couldn't get a holy grunt out of anything. You have to draw your own amen out of the, out of the pulpit. Y'all have gotten a little better over the last couple of years. I can look at you, and you know what I'm going to do, and you'll say amen. Amen? amen. See? I hate to prime the pump all the time, but sometimes you got to to get out the water. But I want to tell you something, friends, if there's ever been a day in our life when this world needs good preaching, fundamental preaching from the Word of God, it's today. Now, I could stand up here and read you some story out of some magazine and have you all in tears. I could tell you some stories about some little children that are neglected that I've come to know that'll put you in tears. But I want to tell you what to solve and all of that, what will be the problem solver with all that is the God of heaven. Amen. And a few preachers in this world that'll stand for the truth and stand for what's right. David knew that. He said, somebody has got to stand here. Somebody's got to be responsible here. And the youngest one in the crowd stood up and said, I'll go fight that giant. It's my responsibility. I'm going to fight this giant. So David proceeded to do just that. He went out and, and, and uh, he looked at his brothers. His brothers ridiculed him. And they all said, well, what? you know, he wasn't looking for anything in return. He was looking, hey, listen, you're going to fight a battle. Don't look for no reward. Hey, man, they'll be there when you get to heaven. David wasn't looking for no re rewards. He was looking for results. Now, he was rewarded uh, for his faithfulness and for doing what was right. But that wasn't what he was doing it for. He was doing it because it was right. And I'll tell you something today. If you stand for God, don't look for somebody to come around and pat you on the back and say you're doing a good job. Don't look for that because it probably ain't going to happen. Brother Coffee, if you preach the word of God and preach the truth and preach the sound doctrine of the scripture, don't wait on people to come tell you how a good job you're doing. Amen. You might get that once in a while, but most of the time when you're preaching the truth, People will say, man, I didn't want to hear that, amen. 
Oh, preacher, Harold Ray, one of the best preachers ever walked in shoe leather. I was sitting in the church one day, and man, he was shelling it out. He got upset over something somebody had done in the church. He got upset over some things that were going on, and he shelled the corn. Do you remember when he'd do that, sister? I mean, he was, he said, you, you asked me, am I hot today? He said, yes, I'm hot, I'm mad. And he wasn't in the flesh either. He was in the spirit of God. And he said, you're sitting there and you're listening to me and you say, I'm not going to hear no more of that. He said, you'll get a good dose now. Amen. Listen, you don't have to stay and listen to the truth, but if you're going to hear it, amen, you're going to hear it. Amen. But there is a day when I, people are afraid they're going to run somebody off if they preach the truth. Well, if the truth runs you off, what good are you doing anyway? Amen. That's right. Now, I can change all of this next Sunday. I'll come in here and I won't take my coat off. I won't, I won't allow these little kids to come up here and play with me between the service. I'll button my coat. Hey, I can button my coat now. Look here. I couldn't do that two weeks ago. I'm button my jacket now. If I let out my breath, they're going to pop. No, but I can come in here and I can, Brother David can sing some lullaby song that'll put you to sleep, which you don't do that, but he could. And I can come up here behind the pulpit and we can do all the things we do and I can read you the church bulletin and I can stand here. Now, brethren, we're gathered here today. So glad we are. And I preach you three points in a voice like this. And read you a nice poem. And that'd be what happened. Somebody be snoring. <laughs> hey, I ain't now, now listen, I've been I've sat under some preachers that stand here and be immobile. Stand here and be stationary, never raise their voice a whole lot and cut me to the heart with the word of God. It's not how loud you preach, it's not how you act, but it's whether or not you got the Spirit of God upon you, and that's what to touch your heart. But if you want formality, you can have formality, not with me, but you can have formality and you do everything just right, start singing the modern songs, start singing the, the stuff that, you know, that'll draw everybody and they get all charged up. Boy, they're all excited and they leave and they deflate like a balloon because they didn't get nothing but an emotional stir at the house of God. Amen. I'd rather have you be in church and not have an emotional stir but have something to feed your soul. Amen. And encourage you to get in the battle, to stay in the battle, because as David's responsibility was, now i got to take this off, it's killing me, as David's responsibility was to be in the battle and to fight the battle, and he saw what his responsibility was. Hey, friend, it's time to get in or get out. Amen. It's time to get in the battle or get out of the battle and sit on the sideline and sit back and twiddle your thumbs and wait on the Lord to come, and if you can do that and get by with it, then you go ahead and do it, get by with it, but I won't want to be your place at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. You make it in, get saved, so as by fire. You get in all right because you're born again in the grace of God. But friend, I'd rather go into battle. I don't want to be sitting on the sideline. I watch my youngers grow up and, and play ball, and they now they, they always at church, never miss church. Uh, but they go up and they play basketball, volleyball, soccer, anything else, softball, anything else coming along, and I'd go there and watch them all I could, didn't miss many, and I'd sit there in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the stands, and I'd be just like I am now. I'd holler and scream, yell, but I'd do that now because I did it then, I could do it then, I'd do it now. Now, if you can go to the ball game and do that, you can't, and you can't do it here, you better shut up at the ball game. Amen? Okay, all right. But I'd sit there, and I wor the worst thing I hated to see was my young and sitting on the sideline and not in the game. And most of the time, they were in the game. But if they had to sit out, me and my oldest daughter, she's she bad to foul. She's a big old girl, and everybody else around her was small. And, and, and I mean, she I, I watched her lay them on the floor. Amen. Because, she I mean, she fouled, and she... She'd get him in foul trouble, and she'd have to sit out. And I thought, man, put her back in, put her back in. I know she had too many fouls, 
But listen, I'd rather have them in the battle, amen, than to sit on the sidelines. I'd rather be in the battle for the Lord than sit on the sidelines, amen. You say, preacher, if I'm in the battle, that don't mean you're going to be a star. But just get in the battle, amen. Do what you can while you can because when you get old and you can't, you don't wish that you had them, amen. Now, that ain't new. I, I've heard that from somebody else. Don't, don't go over here and say, preacher, make some some remarkable remark this morning. I didn't. But I like it. I want to do what I can now while I can do it now so that when I get older and can't, I don't look back and wish I had. Amen. I've done that enough in life. It's time not to do that. You need to get in. Amen. Get in the battle or sit on the sideline and get out of everybody else's way. Amen. Lord, help me to get in the battle and stay in the battle or get out of the way and let somebody else can. Everybody else can. David saw his responsibility. That's what he, that's what he said to his brothers just about. Y'all just stay here. I'm going to go take care of this. I have a responsibility, and if you all ain't going to do it, I'm going to. If you're not going to get in the fight, I'm going to get in the fight, and I'm going down there, and I'm going to whoop that rascal, and when I get through, I'm going to cut his head off, and I'm going to show him around, and the rest of y'all come in and clean up after me. And that's what they did. It took one man to stand up with some responsibility, and when he did, and when he fought the battle, then guess what happened? The whole army got in. They chased them out of town, and they had the victory because someone had some responsibility about them that they were going to stand. Friend, this is the day that we stand or we get out of the fight and move on. Let me ask you something. If we don't fight the battle now, which we, the churches have let down for the past 30 years, but if we don't step up now and start fighting the battle and standing for what's right, brother, what's going to be left for their little children? Them grandchildren, what's going to be left for them? You see how far it's come in the last 10 years. What's it going to be like in 10 more years? Come here, little Kate. Can I borrow you a minute? Will you come to preach a minute? Come here, sweetie. Scared her to death. She was going to, but then she, come here, will you help me? Can I pick you up? Come on. He says, if you can. Oh, maybe you better pick me up. But listen, let me ask you something. Well, who, listen to me now. Who's going to stand up for this little man? In 10 years from now, what's it going to be like for him? I don't know. God may call this boy to preach. Might call Caleb to preach back there. But who's going to stand in the gap? And who's going to stand for these little young ones that you adults and us don't stand today? These girls back right here. Who's going to stand for these kids? Who's going to stand for that young one? If we don't do it today, thank you, son. If we don't do it today, parents, if y'all don't do it today, who's going to do it tomorrow? If we don't stand up for what's right today, in 10 years from now, when these kids have got up to be teenagers and nobody stood and tried to help them, let me tell you something, what kind of mess are they going to be in? Huh? 20 years from now, when all of us are either dead or gone or of no service anymore because we've worked ourselves to death, who's going to stand then? We're raising a generation, friend. They need to know how to stand for God and stand for what's right. It's our responsibility to stand in these days that we live in. I'm not sure we got 10 more years, to be honest with you. I'm not sure that the Lord may not come in the next hour or two. Hallelujah to God. We'd be out of the battle then, wouldn't we? But until that time happens, what are we going to do? We're going to stand, we're going to sit on the sideline. What are you going to do? I'm a, I have determined in my heart that by the help of God and by the grace of God, I'm going to stand if I'm the last one. Amen. I want to stand. If nobody else is, I'm going to do it. But it'll only be by the help of God. It'll only be by his power. It won't be because I decided something. It's because I'm relying on God to do it. And friend, if you're not going to do that, amen, just get out of the way. Lead, follow, and get out of the way. You've heard that before, I'm sure. And that's what it ought to be, friend. Lead, follow, and get out of the way and let the army go by that's going to fight the fight. When Jesus comes back, there's going to be some of those that are still going to stand and say, I stay till the end, amen. I fought till the very last minute, 
And with my dying breath, hallelujah, I want to go out of here knowing that people knew that I was in the battle for the Lord. God said, amen. Hey, you're right there. Are you in the battle? Not only was because of all of that, because of the responsibility that David saw, he saw that the future of the whole nation of Israel was resting in his hands. I believe he knew that if somebody didn't beat that army and beat that giant because it come down to one man, that the Philistines would overtake and would take them captive and they would be in slavery. And David said, I'll have none of that. I'll fight him myself. If I go down, I'll go down to fight him. Amen. Let me ask you something. You gonna fight or you gonna, you gonna just get out of the way? You gonna be like the armies of Israel and stand there and be bullied by the world? Or are you gonna take a stand and stand up for what's right and say, I'm gonna stand for God no matter if it embarrasses me or not? Amen. So if I talk about the Lord, there's people going to make fun of me. Well, guess what? The Lord Jesus Christ not only got made fun of, he got beaten beyond recognition. He did all of that, shed all of his blood for your sins and mine. Why? Because he, you're talking about embarrassment for the Lamb of God when he hung there on that cross naked with all the eyes of the world looking on him, and he could have done something about it, but he didn't because he said, I love them, I'm paying, my sin, paying their sin debt. Why can't God's people stand for the Lord Jesus after what he's done for you? You're going to stand? You're going to take responsibility and stand for what's right? Or are you going to sit on the sideline? David reacted to his responsibility, and I'm going to finish up here. I missed about half everything I was going to preach, but I've got what across what I wanted you to, what God wanted you to hear. And as David cons considered his responsibility, as David considered that he had a job to do, David David was went at this with a commitment that only David could have. Now you know what? I can only commit. To do what God wants me to do myself. And I can't come back here and commit to Brother Matt for the day. Can I do that? Maybe you got it some way, Frank. I can't come back here and commit to Brother Max. Max, you're going to serve the Lord. Now, Max, serving the Lord. That's why I use him. Or I can't come back here and I can't look at Brother Coffee. Brother Coffee, you're going to, I'm committing that you're going to serve God. Brother Matthew, I'm commit I can't you can only do that. I can tell you I can say that, but only you can commit yourself to the Lord. Only you can. I can't do it for you. I pray to God that everybody in here would submit to the will of the Lord and today commit. I'm going to fight in the battle. I'm going to stand up to my responsibility and I'm going to fight in the battle. But the only one I know truly is going to try to do that today is me. The only person I know without a doubt, and I know you're going to you, but the only one I know that know their heart is me when it comes to salvation. That's the only one I know is me. You know your heart. I believe, I believe most of you know the Lord, but I only know for a fact that I'm saved by the grace of God. Hallelujah. And I'm on my way to heaven. And God helped me to stand in this last day we're standing in. It's my responsibility. It's my responsibility to, to be committed. And not only was David committed, he saw his responsibility not only committed, but guess what? He was confident. That, was David afraid? Do you, ever, do you ever think was David had any fear in him at all? So I, put, I tried to put myself in that spot. And, I, and I'm going to use a David for a David today. David, stand up. Now David saw David saw Goliath from afar off. You're not as big as I thought you are. <laughs> That's gonna change. But now little David, he would have been down here like this at Goliath. And I got to think that if that was me, and I come against against Goliath. There'd be some fear strike my heart. 
You like me, don't you, David? All right. Just in case. Now, I don't know if David was fearful. You can say that. I don't know if David was fearful at all. But the possibility of that his old flesh being his old flesh, he got up there and the little, little thing started jumping around his chest and he began to wonder to himself, what have I done? But then he remembered, I'm not coming to you in my flesh. I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. And what fear was there was completely overcome when David looked him in the eye and said, I'm going to cut your head off. That wasn't just talk. That's what he was really going to do. And David had the confidence that that was what he's going to do. He said, I'm going to kill you and cut your head off. And David proceeded to do just that. Took out his little sling, put his little rock in it, slung it around his head, threw it, and it buried into his forehead somewhere. Eye socket, forehead, somewhere it made it in there. Knocked him down, knocked him out, and he took his sword and cut his head off. Was he dead before he hit the ground? I think he was, but David told him he was going to cut his head off, and he did. But there was that confidence in David that he could win the battle, but it was only in the power of God. Now, friend, you can win the battle. You get in the battle, you can stay in the battle, you can win the battle, but it's in the Lord and in him only. We'll never win it in the flesh. God takes care of a whole lot of things that I can't handle. God deal with a whole lot of people that I can't deal with. If I just say, Lord, you deal with it, I can't. I've learned to do that. Even people at work I can't get along with. These people I, they, these people I don't think they'll ever get along with. They're so mean and nasty and arrogant. Oh, Lord, you deal with them. I can't. I don't know what to do about them. You just deal with them. But you've got to have confidence in where your strength comes from. And my strength cometh from the Lord. Friend, I, I, wanna, I just want to tell you what I want to do. I want to die on this battlefield. I'm going to be buried up there in not no time soon, I hope. Me and Brother Vetus was discussing, I want to pick out my plot back there, no matter if I'm pastor here or not, when it comes to my time, I want to be buried right back there. And I want to pick up my spot, and on my tombstone, I want, I'd love for it to say he died on the battlefield. If it's the truth, that's what I'd like it to say on my headstone, he died on the battlefield for the Lord. There's a lot of men out there died and fought in the wars and to secure my freedom today, and probably some of them might have went to hell. I don't know. And you see, they fought in this war, fought in that war. Hey, man, I'd like you to be say I died on the battlefield. Friend, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do? What are you going to do when it comes your time to die? How's it, what's going to be said about you when it comes time, your time to go? Are you going to die on the battlefield? He's going to say, well, he, he did right, and then he gave up on the Lord. He gave up on, on, the, on the things of God. How's it going to be with you? Are you going to stand and serve? Or are you going to take on your responsibility to serve the Lord? I've preached long and loud. One day when I was thinking... On unseen things above, the Savior spoke unto me and filled my heart with love. I'm going to die on this battlefield. I'm going to die in this war. Well, I'm going to die on this battlefield with glory in my soul. Some say give me silver, some say give me gold, some say give me Jesus, who saved my dying soul. Well, I'm going to die on this battlefield, I'm going to die in this war. Well, I'm going to die on this battlefield, with glory in my soul. Give me the gospel trumpet, I'll sound it wherever I go. Then I'll carry it home to Jesus, yonder in glory land. Well, I'm going to die on this battlefield, I'm going to die in this war. 
Well, I'm going to die on this battlefield with glory in my soul. Oh, friend, it ought to be our testimony today. I'm going to die on the battlefield. While every head's bowed, no one looking around. I've done my best this morning to preach to you what thus saith the word of the Lord. I wonder why we wait just a minute. I wonder if there's a child of God this morning say, Preacher, I want to, I want to commit my life today to serving the Lord till he comes back. I want to accept my responsibility as a believer to stand in the battlefield till Jesus comes. Would you slip up your hand? God bless you all over the building. Go to, go to say, I'm going to, I'm going to serve with the Lord. I want to pray a, child, a, a person here today. Say, Preacher, I'm not in a battle. I've never been saved by the grace of God. I want you to raise your hand. Say, Preacher, pray for me. Is there one?